Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to be doing a deck profile on Cherubimon. So this is a very old deck that came back in BT7. So I'm a little bit late to the party. However, this is a deck that I've been wanting to build uh, ever since I opened up some boxes of BT7. And seeing that this actually synergized very well with Ancient Sphinx Mon, which utilized the hybrid engine, this was something that was just a really overlooked deck and I feel like when it comes to building hybrid decks most people do tend to lean towards red and blue because they tend to have the best hybrid decks however in this case building a purple hybrid deck might actually be something that could be fun to play in this particular format given that hybrid decks in general have been gaining quite a bit of popularity in this particular format so with that being said, let's get started. Now of course, just before I begin, I would like to remind you guys to please drop a like, share and comment if you enjoyed this video, it really does help. But with that being said, let's begin. So starting off with the Digi Eggs, I am going to be playing here our four copies of Kokomon. So this card is part of the Cherubimon line where we essentially are focusing on trashing our tamers and then being able to just call them back out uh, from the trash by not having to pay any costs. We'll get to those particular cards when we get to them, but for the time being, this is kind of that core strategy going on. And of course, when we incorporate the hybrid engine into this, we're digivolving right on top of our tamers, being able to technically skip one stage of the digivolutions. It's just something that is really synergistic with each other. Of course, they are from the same set, but that being said, the way that they work so well together is definitely quite a blessing in disguise. However, we are also going to be playing a fifth Digi Egg as well. Sometimes games can push to that point where you need that fifth Digi Egg, and in that case, I chose to play Sunomon. When a card is trashed from your hand, from one of your effects, you actually get to draw one card. Now, of course, this is a hard once per turn effect, but that's okay because being able to just uh, draw one card for a deck that naturally will trash cards from the hand anyway, it's kind of like that additional bonus that you get out of it. So this was just something I chose as the 50 G egg. Now moving on to the level threes, we are going to be playing very few level threes here. This deck is focusing mostly on hybrids and as a result we're playing more cards that allow us to digivolve from the uh, tamers instead. So with all the tamers that we're playing that can digivolve into, they are technically taking the place of most of our level 3s in this particular deck. As a result we're only playing 6 level 3s here which is very little to the usual amount that I would normally play. Most of my decks would normally incorporate about 12 maybe even up to 14 or 15 as well but in this particular case i'm only playing six and starting there i think it's pretty obvious that i'm going to be playing lotmon as part of that cherubi line when you play a tamer gain one memory that's absolutely fantastic if you can do anything to pretty much mitigate that cost then that's definitely a fantastic option to have and lotmon definitely does that job but with that being said, I'm also going to be playing the one copy of Garbamon. Obviously, this card is now down to one from the recent ban list. So because of that, I can only play one. If I could, I'd probably add in a second copy or a third copy as well. Uh, but yeah, with that being said, this was just a really nice card to add into the deck itself. And the last we're playing here is Psychmon. I just feel like this card is really nice to be able to prevent the opponent from reducing play costs. Now, of course, we are also prevented as well from reducing play costs. However, when you play that in a controlled manner, you are able to force the opponent to use up their resources to try and eliminate the Psychmon whilst you're perhaps trying to gather up your own resources to make a comeback for the following turn. So moving on to the level 4s, we're going to start off here with the two copies of our Wendigo Mon. Now this is part of the Cherubi line. You essentially get to reveal the top 5 cards of your deck and then trash the tamers among them. Which is, again, it's just really nice. You don't need to draw into your tamers, you instead 
get to get rid of your tamers and then you'll eventually bring them back from the trash anyway. However, when you play a tamer as its inherited effect, you also get to draw one card. Again, just another benefit to it all and it's something that is almost like a reward for not doing anything at all. Next up, we also are playing two copies of Ogamon here. Now on play, you can also trash one card from your hand to delete one of your opponent's level 4 or lower Digimon. In this particular case, we're not really playing level 3s, but our opponents can still play level 3s. In fact, I've been noticing a lot of decks have been incorporating a Rookie Rush strategy, which is definitely going to hurt us quite a bit. Because of that, Ogamon is definitely that great choice to punish the opponents for spamming out all of their level 3s too early on in the game. That's just something that works incredibly well given that it can trigger off a few other things as well, particularly our Sunamon that we talked about earlier. Now moving on, we're going to be playing quite a few important cards here as part of the Sphinxmon line and that is going to be the two Loemon. And we're also going to be playing four copies here of the Kaiser Leomon. Both cards also from BT7 as well. Both are really amazing cards, allowing you to essentially digivolve onto a tamer as if it was a level 3. And sometimes it can also be a bit cheaper as well, particularly with the Kaiser Leomon. And ultimately this just makes the deck run so smoothly and it's something that is definitely really underutilized by a lot of different players out there so on to the level fives we're going to begin with the antilamon here this is the card i was referring to when it came to playing your tamers from the trash we're only playing two and trust me you only need two but uh, with that being said it is definitely a really good card to get your engine running and yeah you're going to be doing your usual uh, digivolving but this card is definitely going to be the one that uh, sets off a um, bit of a chain reaction going forward. I hope you guys can't really hear that, it's a bit of a helicopter, if you do forgive me I can't really control it uh, but with that being said we are also going to be playing here the One Lady Devimon, it's a bit of a spicy tech I'm incorporating into this deck. Basically, when you're digivolving, trigger draw two and then trash two cards from your hand, allowing you to kind of uh, get a bit of a reward for um, cycling out the cards from your hand. However, its inherited is also just really nice. If your opponent happens to use any option cards, you get to delete one of your opponent's level three Digimon. And I think this particular card in general does start to improve the more the game progresses because at this particular point in time, there are so many option cards out there. There are quite a plethora of good option cards now to choose from and as a result, you're very likely to trigger off this inherited effect and uh, for that, this card is definitely worth playing in the particular deck. Uh, but of course, I will also be playing the uh, Raihimon as well, definitely a fantastic card. This also has the ability to, well, it's also part of the hybrid line that essentially gives you benefits as well uh, when your other Digimon is Digivolving onto a Tamer. Uh, but yeah, it's definitely just uh, part of that line. If you want to adjust this deck a bit, you could perhaps take out one of the uh, Raihimon and add on the third copy of the Antilamon. But this is just the ratios that I feel comfortable with. Now, as for the final level 5, I'm going to be playing here the four copies of Orochimon. When you trash this particular card using one of your effects, you get to draw one card. That's fantastic because you're essentially just getting a benefit out of that. However, if this guy happens to be evolved onto, uh, then you also get an inherited effect where you can trash one card from your hand to gain one memory. Just such a good card. Uh, definitely uh, a fantastic addition to this deck as well. So now we're going to be moving on to the exciting part here, the level 6s. Of course, the card that you're all anticipating, and that is the Cherubimon. This card is definitely a fantastic card for the deck itself. It is the one that essentially allows you to play your purple tamers from your trash without paying any of that memory cost. And on top of that, for every tamer you have in play, you also get to delete one of your opponent's level 4 lower Digimon. Again, similar case, I've been seeing Rookie Rush appear in this format so much, having Cherubimon there is definitely going to slow down your opponents. And of course, you also have an Ontolation effect as well. 
For each tamer you have in play, you can also play one level three Digimon from your trash without paying its memory cost. So if you happen to trash any of your level threes, you just get to bring them back anyway. So you don't have to worry about having too many level threes in this deck. Next up, we're playing the two copies of Ancient Sphinxmon. This one is obviously part of the hybrid line, and it just happens to have that great synergy towards it as well. That works well for this particular deck. The remaining level sixes in our deck are more so utility cards that I believe work well for nearly any other purple deck out there, but in particular, this particular deck. So we have over here two copies of Plutomon. Essentially, when you Digivolve into this, you get to trigger draw two, and then you can use any of your purple option cards with a memory cost of six or less from your hand without paying its memory cost. Again, you're mitigating that cost to play for any of your cards, and because of that, you're essentially generating more and more advantage over your opponent by being able to play cards at either a cheaper cost or at no cost at all. So in this case, we're able to do so with uh, the Tamers and now with options as well, which is a fantastic thing. Now for the final level sixes, I'm going to be playing two copies here of Nidhogmon. This is definitely a very interesting card because it also triggers mainly from an effect if it is discarded from the hand. So if you trash this card from your hand using any of your effects whatsoever, you just get to gain one memory. So very unlikely will you be using its digivolving effect. However, it does have one where if you do digivolve into this, then you can trash one card from your hand to delete one of your opponent's level 4 or lower Digimon. Again, just part of that slowing down your opponent's uh, rookie rush strategy or just reducing your opponent's uh, strategy to nothing at all. But with that being said, it's just having that, that first effect to pretty much gain memory out of that works the best for this particular deck. So onto options, I think they're pretty self-explanatory, but I'm going to be playing two copies of Matt Ishtar. Uh, just basically when one of your Digimon is deleted, you can suspend this Tamer and gain one memory. It's also a two cost, so it is cheap and allows you to Digivolve onto as well. We're also playing two copies here of Mimi Tachikawa, also a two cost card. Every time your opponent uses an option, you can also sp suspend this as well to gain one memory. So again, two cards here that are really great at generating more memory for you. I'm also going to be playing two copies of Koichi Kimura. This can also activate on security, which is just up there, but on deletion from this particular card, if you happen to Digivolve over this, you get to gain one memory as well, which is definitely very nice. Now, of course, on play, you can draw one card and then trash a card from your hand as well. Just working around this particular strategy, it's part of that synergy. I'm going to be playing one copy here of Sora and Mimi. Now, this particular card here is definitely expensive because it is a full cost however you do have the opportunity here to gain two memory if your opponent doesn't have a level four or lower digimon in play keep in mind our whole deck has been focusing on deleting your opponent's level three or lower digimon it's very likely they're not going to have one on the board and so you're very likely to be gaining two additional memory at the start of all of your turns which is absolutely a game breaker in this particular deck and of course when one of your purple digimon attacks as well you can suspend this to trigger draw one and then trash another card focusing more so on the whole cycling of your strategy in this particular deck to end things off with the tamers we're going to be playing two copies of takumi aiba in this particular case all level three digimon also just technically are given a bit of a drawback like i said before at least in my particular area i'm encountering a lot of rookie rush decks and so i want to stop them as much as possible it might not be the case for you guys but that's just what I'm experiencing. And as a result, if your opponent attacks you, then they're gonna lose one memory. I wanna punish them as much as possible. But that being said, Takumi is also going to be a two cost, which is definitely amazing. It's cheap and it's easy to just digivolve over as well. All right, so let's end things off here with the options. Now, I'm going to be playing here two copies of Jack Raid. I think this card at this point is pretty self-explanatory. You gain one memory for every 10 cards in your trash. How much have we been playing a bunch of cards in this deck that focusing on cycling our hand? How many cards do we focus on just trashing from the deck? In this case, 
Jack Raid is amazing. If you trigger it in the security, you also just gain two memory as well, potentially ending your opponent's turn, even though it's just a zero cost card. This card is quite amazing for what it is. Next up, we're also going to be playing that one copy of Calling from the Darkness. Of course, this particular card, really amazing card. It's only at one anyway, so why not add it in? We're also going to be playing here the Mist Memory Boost, trashing two cards from your deck and then drawing one card. And then you also get the delay, which it's a memory boost, of course. But again, similar case, just synergizes with this particular deck very well here, allowing you to trash more cards from your deck, which synergizes with not only the deck itself, but also with Jack Raid. Last but not least, the final card of our deck we're playing is going to be Nailbone. We're playing two copies of these. This is an amazing card. Keep in mind, you don't play many level threes in this particular deck. So what happens is those remaining six level threes, if they happen to go into your trash, you have no more to actually uh, continue digivolving from. So why not play Nailbone, allowing you to actually bring back one of your purple level three Digimon and also one of your purple level four Digimons from the trash without any cost as well you have plenty of memory so paying that seven cost for two cards is definitely well worth it sure the on play effects don't get activated but that's not the point here what we're trying to do is just get more things on the board whilst reducing the amount of cards your opponent actually has on their board and by doing it early on in this particular game or at least with this particular strategy for this particular deck you can definitely uh get things going really well here but that's essentially it for this particular deck profile so i hope you guys enjoyed this one definitely give it a go build it up it's a very cheap deck it's not expensive at all so if anything try it out in this particular format i've been noticing so much of the rookie rush decks and or the rookie rush strategy and if you guys are too then this is the best counter for that but of course thanks for joining me today for this deck profile i hope you guys all enjoyed this and i will see you all next time